Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim. And today I wanna to talk to you about using the Tetrix Prism Robotics Controller with some of the existing hero models. We've really been excited about some of the opportunities we have now because of the fact that we have the Prism Controller. So we wanted to take time to really kind of walk you through exactly what it means to, to modify one of the existing hero models so that we can actually use Prism. So you see in front of you, I've got the um, one of the hero models from the expansion, max expansion set builds. This is the track bot. We've got it set up with the RC controller now, just as you would have out of the building instructions. And I am going to kind of walk you through what it means to mount the prism on that. Uh, and then hopefully I'll show you then uh, a short program that I wrote that uh, actually shows it working. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the idea that basically we have to remove the RC gear. So that's the very first thing I'm gonna do. And, and then I'm gonna come back and, and walk you through some of the things it takes to consider when we're mounting the prism. So I'm gonna start right now and I'm gonna remove what we've got on there as RC gear. Okay, as you can see, I've, I've actually taken off the uh, RC motor controller and the wireless receiver. And I have also saved my nuts and bolts because I'm gonna try and use those um, when I actually integrate the prism to keep down on the part, the necessary needed parts. I'm gonna set these aside just for a minute. And I wanna uh, talk to you a little bit about the idea of mounting prism. And uh, sometimes if you take a few minutes um, ahead of time to actually think through the process, it actually makes the actual construction and then function of the robot a lot, um, a lot more efficient and um, makes your life easier in the long run. So let's think about that. First, we need to actually, if we look at the prism, we, we've got a fairly um, decent sized footprint that we need to accommodate. We've got the mounting holes on the top and bottom or the sides if you depend on that. And I know that when I mount that, I wanna be able to have access to my um, USB port so that I can program it correctly. Uh, I wanna be able to easily plug that um, in and out so that it's not inconvenient because if I have to um, move things around or take something off when I'm programming, it really kind of hinders the flow of that. The other thing that I wanna make sure I can get to is my um, battery connection and my motor ports. That's important as well as being able to uh, operate my uh, start and stop button. So when I'm thinking about that, I've got this kind of nice surface right here and I've got these mounts. Um, I did go ahead and take off the switch plate to kind of give myself a little bit more room. And it looks like the prism would fit uh, across there fairly well, but I don't have any holes that match up. So I'm gonna take uh, two of these angle beams and I'm gonna make uh, take advantage of my existing standoffs. I'm not going to um, move those, but if I put um, a couple of these beams right across here, uh, I think I'll have a good mounting place for my prism. Yes, those holes will mount up just fine. But before I do that, I'm gonna think about my other components I'm gonna need as well, because if I mount my prism here, then I have to relocate my switch. And um, if I think about that, I could put it this direction on the back um, with two inch standoffs, but I think for um, the ease of the wiring and ease of uh, being able to use the switch, I'm gonna go ahead and mount it this direction off of the back of these two plates. My holes should line up if I use my angle bracket. So that'll get the switch out of the way and it'll also be able to route my wiring because I have to have a wiring harness switch that attaches to that. So if I mount my switch here, I can put this wire up across there and actually kind of hide and protect the wiring involved there as well. So um, I think that's a strategy I'm gonna go ahead and employ. I'm gonna go ahead and mount my switch first, route my wires, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mount the, the brackets that I need for my prism controller. So I'm gonna start with that right now. Now I'm using my two inch standoffs and I'm putting them into one side of the bracket because that's gonna be a little bit easier to I'll mount those first, and I'm gonna take advantage of 
one of these short standoffs to, for one of my mounting points there. I'm going to save that short socket head cap screw and replace it with a little bit of a longer one. And when I put this right across like this, this is where you can see that after you, when you trick up, try to have a robot that's built, sometimes going back and adding pieces can be a little tricky to keep from having to take too many parts uh, off. So I can start with that. I can go ahead and put another one on this back side so that I get a secure. Here we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit just for feel. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you can see that I've got these standoffs and it gives me a nice um, mounting point for my switch, which I can put right like that. I'll turn this around so you can see it. Come out there. And then when I use my, my wiring, I can route this up in through here. So I'm going to put my wiring on first. And again, I'm going to interrupt the red side of my triangle with the switch, interrupting the power side, just like that. And you can see that I've got a um, triangle of my wires. This side will go into the prism controller. This side will go into my battery. So if I put that right up along there, you can see that I have a good way to route those wires. So. I'm going to go ahead and mount that with the button head cap screws. So I've rerouted my, relocated my switch. My switch was up here. I've relocated it back here. I've got easy access. Now I need to go ahead and put my brackets on for my prism. Now I could put this on, this is another reason why I wanted to show you this after the fact. I could put this plate on either way and I would have my mounting holes for my prism. Basically I'm worried about these end holes and I could put it this direction or I could mount it like this way. But if you see if I tried to mount it there, I have a pinch point for my wires. So I want to make sure that I actually put that um, angle beam on just like that so it doesn't pinch my wires. Now I can put this other piece, and again, we have the same scenario. I want to make sure that I don't pinch any wires. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in the front, just like this, kind of in the same orientation, and I've got this back one, making sure again that I don't pinch wires. Pinch wires can actually rub through insulation after a while and cause a short. So that's one thing we want to really make sure that we don't, um, we be aware of and we don't allow to happen. Now you can see I didn't really take the uh, other standoffs off. They're, they're not in the way and there's no real um, reason why I need them somewhere else. So I'm just going to leave them there so that if I need to go back to the RC gear, I can do that with a minimal amount of pieces that I've had to take on and off. So I'm just going to leave those there. If I hold my prism up, you can see now that I've got a good mounting position all the way around. I've got access to my wires in the front and access to my switch here and easy access to my USB port here for programming. So that seems a good, a pretty good place for my prism. The other thing that I need to consider though is I have a flat bottom here and now I've actually created some bumps right here with these button head cap screws. So I'm going to make sure if, if I just would put the prism board down like that and snugged it down, I potentially could cause a crack in my case if I tighten them down too much. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to uh, alleviate that by using the little nylon spacers just to give me some, some room between our angle pieces and our prism board so that when I snug that down, it, um, it actually will hold that off of the button head cap screws. Again, you want to think about things like that. Uh, they might seem minor, but 
they potentially could cause some damage to your components and we really don't want to do that. Now, before I go ahead and fasten these down, I want to go ahead and just because of ease of access, I can go ahead and actually plug my switch in and I can go ahead and also plug in my motor cables. And because I had these already attached and um, tried this before, I've actually identified which ports they are by a piece of colored tape so that I kind of know where, um, because of the program that I did ahead of time, I know where I want to put those back into my controller. So I want to go ahead and put my yellow side into my motor port one, my red into motor port two, and attach my battery connection, just like that. So my basic connections are made and I, now I can just go ahead and mount my prism, attach it firmly. I've got a mount on spacer down here, track. If I set that down just like that. So I've got my battery connection over here. I'm gonna turn this around so I can see where I'm connecting. Plug that in just like that. And I can test my power. Got power there, so I know that's good. Make sure that that's, again, accessible, but not in the way wheels. I need to attach my servos. And again, I have just identified those with some yellow tape. I don't know that I want that one in one. And I want this one in two. Making sure my ground and data is on the wires on the right sides. And I need one more thing uh, to make this actually a really uh, effective programmable robot. Now I could actually program him now to drive around, but I want to make it a little bit more interesting than that, so I'm going to add a sensor. And I've got an ultrasonic sensor here, and I need a mounting point. And if on the very front, and I've actually gone ahead and done this, but on the very front there's a plate. If we replace that uh, 96 millimeter flat, then we can actually use an angle piece right here. Uh, that gives us a good mounting point for our sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that real quick. Move this around. So I have my sensor in place. The last thing I need to add is my cable to actually attach it to my prism. So one end is going to go down here. It is keyed, so there's only one direction that can fit. Make sure that is seated properly. Route this up through here, and I'm going to put that into this side. My input sensor port three, just like that. So. Now, physically, I don't need these, um, put these aside. I have a robot where I have actually mounted, turn this around so you can see, instead of the RC control, I've mounted the prism controller, I've relocated my switch, I've added a sensor. So now I've got a robot that I can program, and I have programmed, so we'll see how that works. I'm gonna go ahead, move this little mat, move my tools out of the way, so, Got a limited amount of space here on the table, but hopefully I can demonstrate what I've uh, programmed. Uh, I'm gonna power on my, my robot. Now this is a real simple program. I've got a little cube that uh, I can use, and the idea is that I, when I start my robot, he's gonna raise his arm. He's gonna wait till it sees something within range where the jaws would be. And when I put that in place, it's gonna come down, it's gonna pick that up and then it's gonna move forward a very short distance again because I've got a table here, and then it's going to just drop the piece. So let's see if this all works like we hope it will. So I'm gonna start my program. Let's raise my arm, so that's good so far. So I'm gonna see if I can put that in place. Let's seize it. 
comes down, picks it up, it forward and drop it. So you can see that that's uh, fully functioning and actually I've got this in a loop so if I back this up and did that one more time just to prove that it wasn't a fluke, you should see it, pick it up, move forward and drop it out of the way. So that's a prism mounted on one of the Max Hero models. This is something you could do uh, at home if you have a Max expansion set and the programmable starter set with the Prism controller uh, from the programmable set um, so that you have the ultrasonic sensor or you could get those things a la carte. Um, we actually have this simple program that we're going to post if in case you want to do that. But that's the basic uh, things that you want to think about when you mount Prism on an existing robot. So I hope you found that interesting and maybe uh, some inspiration for you on how you can add Prism onto one of your existing builds and make it truly programmable. So like we always say, have fun, build some robots and come back and see us.